previously on the Downscaling Chronicles. The Extron IN1606 is a professional video scaler that, when programmed with a custom edit binary resolution, can downscale to 240p. In my best efforts though, the 60Hz video I fed the Extron dropped to 56, causing noticeable frame skips. Craig Tucker answered my call for help to verify my results, and with some further adjustments, I had the downscale 240p video running at 58 to 59 frames per second. So I think 60Hz should be achievable if we can get the 240p ED better optimized. So I'm not writing off the Extron scalers just yet, and to see our work in progress, check out the previous video's comment section for more details. My experience with professional video scalers that were never intended for 240p output has so far been hit or miss. The Corio 2 TV1750 has proven to be the most versatile and willing participant, whereas the DVD-O iScan HD Plus wouldn't display all consoles. So fingers crossed that our next contender can break the Pro Scaler losing streak. The Dido Jr. made by Aurora Multimedia was marketed for commercial advertising as a video wall processor with portrait mode rotation. They scale up and down an array of resolutions, and it's the user programmable option that's gotten my attention. I first read about these scalers on a shmups forum with reports of programming the LT and Junior models for 240p output, where the former apparently shares the same features as the Junior, although without image rotation. Not only is the Dido Junior similar in size to the TV1750, they also look suspiciously related. Both use a 12 volt power supply, but the 750 second DVI input is exchanged for S video on the Dido Junior. And the DVI output on the Junior sends RGB HV, sync on green, or YPBPR. However, component video will only output starting from 480p. Without an RGB S output, I'm using the tried and true passively combined HV sync circuit built into a male SCART head. 240p timings are programmable into the user presets, and although there's 10 that you can alter, only 5 will show in the resolution menu. And entering the signal timing menu can only be done while displaying any of the stock resolutions. The remote isn't required, but it made programming and calling up presets that much easier. I found a stock 480p profile that I used as my 240p template by simply changing the mode to progressive. Through trial and error, I altered the H and V start, which I presume is the resolution back porch. And this was the best I could fill the 14L5 screen when downscaling the Neo Geo Mini 720 to 240p. That 480i profile though, wasn't a selectable resolution. And although I tried to program interlace 15 kilohertz, I found out straight from the source that the Dido Junior won't output any interlace video whatsoever. So for standard def, it's solely a 240p downscaler. Going from 480 to 240p has varying 16 to 33 milliseconds of lag, translating as one to two frames. And 720 and 1080p inputs have the same amount of lag, but roll much slower. 480i and 240p through DVI are grossly overscanned, but I guess that's what the S-Video input is for. The Junior can also rotate and mirror flip the image on the X and Y axis, but needs to buffer a whole extra frame, with a variable 35 to 51 milliseconds, so effectively 2-3 to three whole frames to downscale and rotate the video. When I tried running the Spears and Munsell test pattern Blu-ray through the PS3, just like the DVD-O iScan HD+, there's a firewall that prevents displaying HDCP protected content. Denied. That's a huge shame, and I don't have any HDCP stripping devices on hand. Otherwise, the Dreamcast 240p test suite has been my fallback to help visualize how downscaling works. 
You need to select RGB in the window setup menu in order to display a VGA source. The lines were more compressed at regular intervals, while Messi was definitely cleaner than the TV1750. And once I fine-tuned the custom resolution, the vertical scaling was much more uniform, and almost as slick as the Extron Emotions method of adjacent field blending, but spills the imperfectly scaled image over multiple scan lines in some areas of the screen. You can move and resize the window, and if the downscaled image is outside of this area, then you're best to go back and alter the resolutions H and B star. And then there's window cropping, which I assume affects the front porch, and take a look at the difference it makes when I adjust the bottom vertical cropping by just two pixels, drawing most of the dots from three lines down to two and a bit, which looks a lot more focused. The video settings have controls for white balance and color correction, convenient for games with darker scenery. Altering the sharpness didn't change a thing to my eyes, so you won't be able to jam it down to simulate classic RF. It holds its own against the line decimating Retrotint 5X with an all-round smoother and well-preserved image. And the resulting downscale looks just as sharp at any input resolution. And yeah, yeah, you know what I'm going to say about not having a 480i output. Text is difficult to read, and 3D details are kind of swept under the rug, but in my opinion, it beats line decimation 240p when downscaling modern games. For the oddball 270p upscaled Shredder's Revenge, the Dido Jr. being a scaler at heart, makes easier work of blending the non 240p integer lines. But just like the grid test pattern, there still remains some remnants of the uneven scale. Downscaling MDK2 on the Dreamcast made me shudder with a flashback to the Extron Emotions color banding, but thankfully, that's exactly how the game looks when running 480p directly into the multi format PVM. Whew. So, how about that 1 to 2 frames of lag? I can't speak for everyone as lag is a subjective and kind of sensitive topic. And since I've been downscaling with the decks in my setup that runs at 2 frames of latency, the Dido Jr's 2 variable frames also didn't hamper my ability to land tricks when downscaling the Dreamcast version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. As for the rotation feature, which adds 3 frames of latency, I can see a hypothetical use case if one CRT is rotated the wrong way in the setup. At least, that's what I naively thought. Because if you flip the picture, then you also gotta flip the controller. And if you're not playing one of the few Seeker Saturn Tate games on the Mr. FPGA where you can remap the controller, I don't see any other use for the rotation feature. So how does the Dido Jr. fare on the downscaling scorecard? It only outputs 240p, but accepts 480, 720, and 1080p inputs. My rule for lag was one point if under two frames, and another if under one. I gave the TV750 half a point for one downscaling scenario, 720 to 240p, which was under two frames. We're really splitting hairs here, and I think it's fair to overlook the less than one millisecond to score at least half a point. The image quality is just as slick as the Extron 1606, and runs at the same vertical frequency it's fed, gaining 2 points for image quality. And like the other commercial scalers, picture adjustments are cumbersome but with several resolutions and image resizing presets, gives another 2 points for a total of 7.5. So what to make of the Dido Jr. as a 240p downscaler? Is this the GBS control on roids? While it can be classified as so, given that it only outputs 240p but accepts 720 and 1080p, I'm more inclined to call the Dido Jr. a crippled Choreo 2 scaler. They both share the same input resolutions, but misses the mark by not having a 480i output and no downscaling under 2 frames. Barely. 
It's not a bad downscaler by any means, just not one I'd recommend given they're generally more expensive and harder to find than other options. I guess the Dido Junior's trump card is that rotation feature, so in the very rare chance that you're a Tate connoisseur, can stomach three frames of lag, and have no other means to rotate the video by software, then this is the downscaler for you.